Welcome back to The Human Perspective. Today, I'm really happy that we're going to be in talking to James Ian. Hi, James. Hi, Judy. Thank you for having me very much. Appreciate it. So, I would heard about James, but last year, I had the privilege of being on a panel with him over at a Georgetown event. And so, I know that many of you will know him, but I thought for those of you who don't, we could give a little bit of time to learn about who he is and uh, what makes him tick. So, James. I know that you're from Washington, D.C. And uh, how long did you live here? Um, I lived here for about 32 years before I moved to California. So it was a, a good chunk of time. And I met his mother, Gail. <laughs> she is so sweet. Hello. I'm gonna be having lunch with her at some point shortly. Um, so James, tell us a little bit more about how, well, first of all, what your disability is and how your disability has been influencing who you are and the work you've been doing. Sure, so I have, um, I have two actually, but um, spinal muscular atrophy type three, um, that's a genetic disorder. So um, it, it, it affects my mobility in many ways, like getting up out of this chair, I'm probably gonna need some help from you to do that uh, afterwards. Um, I can't run, um, I'll involuntarily fall down sometimes, I can't get up on my own. Um, it affects you know, my arms as well, lifting heavy things, our fatigue, um, going up and down stairs really difficult. So pretty much all of the major life functions it affects. Um, and it's just, it's shaped me because it's made me be kind of creative and problem solving and just navigating daily life. I have to you know, come up with little tricks and um, things just to kind of get the job done and you know, get from point A to point B. Um, and in terms of art, um, it definitely, you know, uh, shaped kind of just my view of the world and, and looking at it through a different lens of um, having a physical challenge and still, you know, wanting to accomplish the things I want to accomplish. Let's talk a little bit more about your art. So why don't you explain to us what art forms you're using? Sure. Um, so I'm a musician, so I uh, write songs, I play instruments, I sing. What do you play? Um, I play, uh, I play, Guitar, keys, bass, and drums. Um, I have an album called The Labor of Love. I, I played all the instruments on that album, but live it's typically me and a guitar or me and keys. Um, so I do that. I love writing. Uh, that, that's kind of the 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 center center point for kind of all the things I like to do. Um, and then I also um, I'm an actor, so uh, I, I just like to tell stories um, through various methods and through those uh, through writing music and uh, acting. So when you're writing music, what are some of the issues and emotions that you're trying to bring forth? Uh, um, I'm trying to bring forth um, just um, hope. Um, I'd say perseverance definitely uh, is a theme. Uh, love is, you know, heavy in there. Uh, also loss is, you know, also um, a big one. Um, so just, I think it's the things that we all feel, but a lot of it is, um, for me, just, um, like I said, just trying to get the job done however you can do it and just not give up. That, that's definitely been a theme, especially in the earlier years of my music was a big one. How can people hear your music? Uh, so I'm on Spotify and um, Apple Music, all that good stuff. So the artist's name is James Ian. Um, I have an album out called Labor of Love, which I mentioned. And then I just released a song uh, at the beginning of Black History Month called uh, Make a Stand. Mm -hmm. And that is about um, essentially fighting discrimination, whether it be racial, uh, disability, um, all, all those things. So. Uh, so that is also on Spotify and all those platforms. And it's also, there, I'm on Tidal as well, so. So, as a black disabled man, or a disabled man who's black, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how do you use those terms? And do you use them, do you have a consistent set of words that you use for yourself? Or when you're speaking to different groups, do you use different terms? Sure, I say, um, I say, I'll, the, the phrase I always say is, I'm a disabled black man in America. Uh, and there's no there's no reason why I put one before the other. It just flows better to me from you know that kind of when I say it. But um, yeah, I mean I, I'm from you know a couple of uh, communities that um, have been faced uh, intense you know um, 
violence and, and, and hate and discrimination. So um, that is uh, is definitely that that perspective is in pretty much everything I do. It's always I'm always thinking about um, me in the world as a as a black man with a disability. So looking at yourself as a disabled black man in uh, performance arts, mm -hmm. what do you see as some of the changes that have occurred? Um, and what do you see as some of the challenges that you're still facing? Sure, so I think from the, the angle of um, being black, I, you know, over the years I've seen um, black male leads in film and TV, black female leads in um, film and TV, so I think I think that um, I've seen, you know, definitely positive change. I was born in the early 80s and you didn't see, to me, I didn't see a lot of that. And then as time has progressed, you see more of it. But I also think that there's still a lot of work to be done there. You know, you look at the awards, Oscars, um, they're, they're, you know, little to none uh, in terms of nominations and, um, and, and, and all that stuff. So I think we still are far off from, you know, having more black representation in, in TV and film. Um, from the disabled angle of things, um, I think we still have so, 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 so much uh, farther to go with that. Uh, you know, there, the conversations going on now, you and I talked about that, you write about that. Um, and I, I, I see more net, more news bits about, you know, uh, a person with this disability was cast and so authentic representation but it's still, it's such a small percentage. And I still hear that, my, you know, I have friends, I go out and audition, I still hear auditions that go to non-disabled um, actors for a role that requires a disability. So um, maybe it's lip service, I don't know, but I think I think we need a lot more work done there. And, and, and we have seen a few, you know, um, uh, disabled actors in TV and film, and it's great to see that, but it's just, it's still not to the level that we needed to, you know, where we needed to be because uh, disabled people are out here in the world doing things. So, and I want to see more of that um, in TV and film. So, it's good to see the little changes, but I want more. So, um, there are many different organizations of Black artists mm -hmm. and Latino artists and women artists, and not that much in the area of disability artists. Right. Um, do you find other um, or other groups that are working on advancing diversity are receptive and inclusive of disabled artists who fall within the categories they're focusing on? I think to a degree, yes. They're, you know, just from, in my everyday conversations with people, it seems like there is some openness to it. it um, but I also think there are still probably reservations um, and about you know bringing the um, disabled actors into you know in, into their spheres and so um, and, I, and I think that's probably for the reasons that they're not cast you know authentically so um, that definitely is an issue uh, lots of work to be done there but you know people will say yeah we'll do that but I just I don't really see it happening you know and I, and I think it's um, I think also too just because of the nature of media it's so hard to you know book jobs and it's very very the competition is very fierce so it's like the more we can exclude then you know it's a better chance of how it land in this role so you yeah, i think i think there is apprehension of like well if we you know if we bring in disabled actors then the focus is going to be on them and then you know my group is not going to get as much attention and love and so uh, i think that's so i think that's bad play there too what is your hope for yourself um over the next three to five years and what, are, what is your vision of where we need to be going within the disability community and media and the arts? Sure, so for me personally, the next three to five years, I wanna be acting and doing my music full time. I would love to be um, in films and you know, series regular, series lead. Um, you know, this is where my, my, my heart is at and I, I love it. I love doing the creative work. That's, the, that's what I feel most like myself. So. Um, I want to be doing that and, you know, being able to uh, sustain uh, life with that. Um, one of the goals for me, why I do this is you talk about it, the, the, the such, there have been such negative portrayals of people with disabilities in media. And my goal is to uh, 
you know, smash those to pieces. I want to be, I want to show that disability comes in all shapes and sizes. Um, you know, people see me standing there. Sometimes they might not know I have a disability, but I have, you know, a, a major disability. Um, so I want to show that we can be leading ladies, leading men. We can be the romantic, you know, interest in a, in a, in a major film, the romantic interest in a show. I would love to have a show where it talks about, you know, my dating life and, and, and all that stuff because that we we're, it's it's negative portrayals and so disabled people date and love and do everything else and so I want to show that we can be uh, just as um, you know sexy and, and cool as uh, non-disabled actors um, so that's uh, a big thing for me. So what words of wisdom do you have for viewers who are believe that they're talented and are interested in moving into music or work behind in front of the camera or acting um and they're teenagers or young adults what what are your words to them i would say um if, if you really believe in it and you love it focus on it um learn the craft you know take take your vocal lessons take your guitar lessons whatever it might be um if it's acting get an acting coach take acting classes really really work hard on the craft because it's it's really really tough out there and there are a lot of people that you know have a certain look or um, or talent, and so the competition is, like I said earlier, fierce. Um, but also, people are going to tell you no, especially I think if you want to pursue an art. Um, I've heard that from you know friends and other people, not my family. They're extremely supportive, but people will tell you no, you can't do that. And if you really believe in it, don't listen to uh, that. If it's in your heart, just do everything you can to make yourself better and never get up, give up, because you'll hear no a million times um but just 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 hang in there the opportunities will come and be prepared for those opportunities thank you so much thank you so here we are again can you believe that 10 minutes have flown by <laughs> please download uh labor of love from james ian and uh, if he's going to be playing or speaking at a conference in your area i strongly encourage you to try to meet him he's a great guy thank you all talk soon Thank you, and uh, buy Judy's new book. Ah, uh, yeah. My new book is <laughs> out called Being Human. You can get it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or Indie. Thank you. Yep, thank you.